So I just came from Las Vegas, North Las Vegas, at our site for Hyperloop One. We bought all the land there, and then uh, the construction is happening now. So there's giant pylons going up, the tubes are being constructed, um, and we're shooting for the first uh, full-scale Hyperloop test happening in Q1, Q2 of uh, 2017. And what's so what is full-scale? Yeah, what's the test like? Full-scale is going to be, um, we'll have uh, cargo in there. Uh -huh. uh, it'll be cargo. Um, but Going from the, where to where? It'll be 11 and a half feet, um, okay. almost, uh, almost a kilometer. What's um, the cost of the test? Um, I, it's, I mean, we've raised $160 million. We're 200 people full time. We have a two to three acre campus. Uh, but you can kind of figure out it, that's enough to do all of the things that we've How been doing. How soon before you put a human in the test? Um, I mean, I, you know, I might, I might be sitting in there, I don't know, I might surprise you guys and just. Math out time. though. How much does it cost if you want to really, you know, if we're going to get rid of this. Am we're going to take an. He may take an Amtrak train. I know I'm taking one tomorrow from New York to, to D.C. Yeah. To actually put this into service in a meaningful way, what's what's the true cost of putting this together? Well, it depends on each project, but it, it'll be much cheaper than current uh, high-speed rail projects around the world. Uh, and we've been signing uh, deals and feasibility studies around that. We just came from. Uh, Dubai and Abu Dhabi, then Abu Dhabi, Dubai would be a 12 minute ride mm -hmm. um, and uh, versus a two hour drive. Um, so, you know, and if we did SF California, it would, uh, SF to LA, it would be 35 minutes. So it would change the whole concept right. of where you but live Brent, and where you work. Bring Brent in the conversation. Brent, just in terms of the feasibility of this, how many people can actually go on this at one time? Because it's a small um, tube, right? Sure. Um, when you're talking about moving people, yeah, it's a small tube and it's on demand. Now you could, uh, yeah, we, we need to make the financial model work and the technology will certainly work for one. It will certainly work for uh, you know, a couple of dozen people you know, in, a, in a tube, as you put it. But in terms of the economics, when you think about it, do you think it more about moving people or more about moving cargo? It's certainly both. Uh, you know, there we're working on both concurrently, and in, in our current portfolio of, of projects that are moving around the world, there's cargo, you know, and and there's people. So but, I do think about both. But you cargo must be thinking be that eventually it's more than 12 people, right? I mean, there's got to be. More. Yeah, the, the, sure. The no, I'm thinking I'm, we're talking about individual pods. Right. Okay. And how many pods then could run it? You, one you, shot. You can shoot pods 30 seconds after the other. So you can think of it as one continuous train, even if they're not connected. You're, you're shooting them 30 seconds uh, after each other. What does it feel like? Do I feel the torque? It's going to feel just like uh, taking off on an airplane or on a train. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.